Hello, my little goblins. We're here with another one, another deck profile. And guess what we got today? Ice barriers. Yes, you heard it right. Ice barriers. Someone actually made this deck. So, how does ice... What's the game plan? That's, that's pretty much what you're going to be asking me, right? You're going to say, Fat Zoid, what is a game plan? So, the game plan is pretty simple. We want to... If we're going turn one, we want to pretty much go into Bahamut Shark, into Totally Awesome, or into number 41. And if we're going to turn two, we want to board break our opponent. With that, we have three Lightning Storms. We've got two Forbidden Droplets, and we got... One Dark Ruler no more. And how do we break their board after doing our Forbidden Droplet? Uh, well, we have Reveler of the Ice Barrier. So if you summon this, you're able to discard a card in hand. You can special summon a Tuner from your deck. Usually you'll be sending Hexia Spirit. And then Hexia's effect, we'll send our Defender. So we have a level 3 and a level 4. And then finally, any other level 4 Extender, like Silent Angler, Tenny Spirit... Speaker of the Ice Barriers, Silent Sea Nettle. Uh, we have quite a bit of options. Any one of those in conjunction with our Tuner and our Reveler uh, will equal a Trishula, Zero Dragon of the Ice Barrier. And what does this card do? We can banish up to three cards our opponent controls. And if they uh, destroy our trishula we get to special summon one trishula dragon of the ice barrier from our extra deck or graveyard and its attack becomes 3300 it also halves the attack of all face-up monsters currently on the field and negates their effect so dark ruler is the field after your opponent kills it it's really that the secondary effects really not worth too much because most of the time if your opponent's popping your card it's like with a lightning storm or something and if they end up popping it with a mirror jade, it's like right after you're, you just wiped their entire board anyway. So I, I never really found the secondary effect of that where Dark Rule is a field really that useful. But the, the big thing is we banish three cards on the field. Uh, another combo we have is if we can get a level four. And if this can summon a level three so we use this and then we actually summon defender and if we have christron c tree in our hand we can use this card to go into our christian quarian gandrix which uh, again banishes pretty much three cards your opponent controls uh but it's only monsters so this actually doesn't banish spells and traps like our Trishula does, but it does ban banish monsters. It also targets in graveyard, and uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So that's uh, kind of the game plan. If you're wondering around what's up with this, these cards, relinquish Enema just because we can get into Hexia Spirit pretty easily. Marine Marine Cess Coral uh, again, so we can. Uh, it's pretty much combo plays with the prior of the Ice Bearer. Because you can use Marine Sass and another any water to go into a card. And then it lets us combo and just get more pressure out on the field. Um, Nightmare Unicorn is specifically in the deck just because we play against so many Despia because we're in Diamond. It's literally like 90% of the field. And, and then Access Code Talker to finish games off because I feel like the deck has a hard time doing that. So let's get into the games, and then we can check out uh, what happened and the recap at the end like we normally do. Hello, everybody. We're here for game number one, and our hand is pretty decent. Uh, to be honest, we're playing against Branded, which is disgusting, but it is what it is. Uh, we're going to play Maxi, and Maxi resolves, so... Yeah, sometimes uh, you just have to get lucky with the Maxi resolving. Uh, remember, we're playing in Diamond, so literally every person we're playing against is pretty much a Despia deck. And if they're not playing that, they're playing Sword Soul. It's pretty disgusting, pretty rough. Um, and we'll talk more about it in the recap. Um, well, we opened up with a Lightning Storm, which is a very good card, with the Called by the Grave. So we can board wipe the field. And then we can Called by the Grave the Mirror Jade Dragon. 
it's kind of like uh, negative synergy with our General Wayne because General Wayne wants a monster in the field. Well, should be okay. We have Speaker. Summoning, we go into Bahamut Shark. Bahamut Shark's going to special summon our totally awesome. Not quite lethal yet. But we're going to Hexia Spirit. And then we're going to grab our another level four. We go into Marine Sess. And our opponent concedes because we're going to be very close to lethal, if not exactly there. Um, yeah, just kind of show you the, the, the fact that that can possibly OTK. But it, like I said, it's very rare the deck actually OTKs someone. We definitely could have gone for like a Trish play there, and we could have banished a bunch of his cards. Uh, but I've always, I always find if you can close out a game against Despia, you'd rather just do it as soon as possible because they're definitely going to outgrind you. You're not outgrinding the Brandon. Hello, we're here for game number two, and my goodness, my opponent is playing. What a surprise, Branded. It's literally every game. But our opponent makes a very odd decision. He plays uh, the Despian card, and then he just links it off to Link Karibo. I assume our opponent had no way of uh, defending, uh, pretty much. So we're going to play Ash Blossom on the Maxi. And we get it resolved, which is nice. Uh, we're going to be able to get that Reveler, which is huge for the deck, remember. Um, he's going to Ash Blossom himself. And then we can cross out here. And then he has Imperm. So, yeah, well, this is what Diamond's like. Uh, people who uh, want to actually have fun in the game, I recommend not going to Diamond. Uh, because, honestly, this is not very enjoyable. Especially if you're someone who likes to make and play test decks. It's like miserable. Like, it's pretty brutal. We go into Bahamut Shark, though. And that's going to get our totally awesome. And remember, when you use Bahamut Shark's effect, you can't attack with it. So, uh, that's why that last game I was saying we almost had lethal because Bahamut Shark can't attack. Um, so, Alibur is going to activate its effect. We're just going to totally awesome it. Like, there's uh, he's on top deck mode. There's zero reason we're in a very dominant position right now where we can just uh, totally awesome next turn too. And we can pretty much lock our opponent out of the next two turns, which is pretty sick. We also could have just Ash Blossom there, but I think it's better to just take his cards if you can. But, all right, we'll go to game number three. Hello, everybody. We're here for game number three. And my goodness, uh, our hand is actually not too bad here. We're going to play a speaker, and then we are just going to go straight into the Bahamut Shark play, which is going to get our totally awesome. And like I said, this is pretty much what you do if you're going first. You go first, you want to go into the Bahamut Shark, into totally awesome. Uh, but you also can go into Bagu Baguska if you feel that's a better play. But we're going to take their pot of pee and we're going to set it on our own side of the field, which is pretty sweet. And then he's going to activate Incredible Inclasia. We're going to flip our called by because Yelmocha can mocha my nuts. Uh, <laughs> like when you can make your opponent suffer for playing top tier decks when you're playing this garbage, uh, you definitely want to do so. But he goes into Baron to Flare. Kind of tilting. Baron's going to pop our Droplet. And here we're going to Droplet. The so if you guys are wondering why the fuck I did this. It's not stupid. Because I needed Bahamut Shark to be healthy. So I hope you guys understand that. Because <laughs> if I let him kill it and just attack... He would have just, like, he, I would have no follow-up. So now, I actually, he let me, he, like, thank the heavens, the guy let me use his pot of pee. Because now he found Hexia Spirit, and now we can activate our speaker. So speaker lets us summon a level 1 token. Level 1 token brings his attack to 2,500. We switch bomb to attack. This, uh, 
I assume he's playing DPE too. Scumbag. Scumbag Yul Mulcher. Hit him for two hundo. And now we make our totally awesome. And our opponent is boned because they're in top deck mode. And they concede because they're crybaby losers. Alrighty, guys. We're here for the recap. And you're like, Fatsoid, that was only three games. You normally show like fucking 30 of them. And I'll be like, yeah, I do. Because usually the games that I'm playing, like, they're not, they don't want to make me go on a, um, on a live watch. So, yeah. This deck... As, so this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to say a few things first. If I was playing this deck in gold, I'd probably have fun. I'd probably have fun with it. Not going to lie. Uh, I think the deck could probably thrive in gold. You're playing against much less competitive people. But dude, at Diamond, man, people are so sweaty. I am not kidding you. 95%. I played 20 games with this deck. And I believe 18 of the games were branded Despia. Like how disgusting is that? Like, literally, like, 90% of the field was branded Despia. It, it, was, it was pretty nasty. And then the other two decks were Sword and Soul. So, uh, and I actually beat one of the Sword and Souls, surprisingly. <laughs> but, man, it, it, there's just so many better decks that you could be playing. Like, if you want to do Link, like, s s silly synchro plays, I feel like there's so many better decks that you can have. Uh, I just don't think the archetype is very good to begin with. And I had to craft two ultra rares for this and a bunch of super rares. So I hope you guys appreciate that. And you guys give me a like down there and subscribe to the video. Because I play the decks that you guys don't want to play. So you can see if they're shit or not. And guess what? It's shit. So, yeah, the, the deck's bad. It's just really, 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 really bad. I think this is my worst performing deck I've ever had. And before anyone says... Oh, you're not playing the right Ice Barrier cards. I'm going to pull up Ice Barrier right now for you fucking apes to see. Well, am I supposed to play the Terra of Trishula? Am I supposed to play Ice Barrier? I, I will actually tell you Ice Barrier is not a horrid card. But when you're just losing this is, since the beginning of the game, uh, because all your entire it takes your entire hand to just build like one boss monster, and then you have no backup... And your opponent can just dispatch that with uh, like half of a card of his. It, it's not very fun. I'm just telling you that right now. Uh, it, like that that would not save the deck. I, actually, I think it would make the deck a lot clunkier. Um, all these ice barrier cards are just all so bad. All so bad. Like, do you do you guys want me to craft? Uh, um, you guys want me to craft by Brianica? Would that would that help? I actually think Brianica could have been actually not that bad against Despia though. Now I'm thinking about it. You'd be able to bounce the Mirror Jade, right? That kind of saves you. But either way, it, 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 it's fucking horrid. Because cause you know what the fun fact about Mirror Jade is? Even if it's negated, since it sends for cost, they're still going to get value out of the Mirror Jade. So they're going to get their branded fusion for next turn. And then you're fucked. So, yeah. It is what it is. I had probably like a... I, out of 20 games, I probably won like four or five. Like, that's how bad it was. Four or five out of 20 games is so horrible. It's, not, it's literally the worst I've ever performed. I think it was like, a, what's that? A 25% win rate? Dude, so bad. And I know this is in diamonds, so like, if you wanted to play this in gold, go for it. But like, dude, it costs a lot of ultra rares to like, I would even, I would not be, it's not worth it. I'm telling you that right now. Not worth it. Don't build the deck. Uh, was it like fun when you actually got to do stuff? Yeah, obviously any deck's fun when you get to do the engine it's meant to do. Uh, this is why I believe, uh, Master Duel and Yu-Gi-Oh! in general should have secondary formats, either like a super low power scaled, uh, format where they use either legacy cards or something like that. Uh, or something like that where, where like, I don't know, like a format where Don Zalug's a good card. You know what I mean? Because then you could actually make, like, cards like this actually work and be competitive. But for right now, they're fucking dog shit. Like, my goodness, dude. They pissed me off because I wasted 60 Ultra Rare Dust on this. No, 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 I didn't. I wasted 90 Ultra Rare Dust on it. I had to build and craft this, this, and this. 90 Ultra Rare Dust down the tube and a bunch of Super Rare Dust. That makes me want to put my head through the wall right now. 
Uh, we're about to go through a hurricane down where I live. Uh, and I'm about to go into the middle of the eye of the hurricane and dance. Just so I I will never have to see this deck again. Um, that's probably a little too much. But yeah, I just wish it was better. The cards look cool. I really like the way uh, General Wayne looks. General Wing. <laughs> it looks pretty badass. But I hope you guys uh, stood here till the end of the video. Like I said, please subscribe. Consider supporting the channel. Um, also, if you guys can join our Discord, that would be a big help. Uh, it's ever growing. I think we're at like 90, getting closing in on 100 uh, people in the Discord. And it's pretty active. I'm going to tell you that right now. A lot of people messaging in there. And uh, if you do message in there, a lot of people will help you if you're trying to get advice for a deck. So, yeah, check it out. Well, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoy your day. And remember, don't build ice barriers unless you just want to lose games.